So ngif and ng4 are what is known as structural directives in Angular, and the reason for that is we can use them to control how a component displays certain things uh, when it's rendered to in the browser. So let's take a look at some examples. We'll first look at ngif. So ngif is basically like an if statement in your template. So if we wanted to render a button on the page, for example, maybe it has some text inside it. If we wanted to render that only under certain conditions, we can use ngif to display it or remove it, depending on the value that we supply to the directive. So to use ngif, we use an asterisk and then type in ngif as the directive. And then in the quotes, we need to provide some kind of expression that resolves to either true or false. So for example, if I set the value directly in ngif to false, the button disappears. And if we set it back to true, the button should reappear. Now it's worth noting that this actually completely removes the button from the document, it's not actually hiding it. So if we inspect the button in the document as it is, you can see that button is appearing there in the dev tools. But if we then set this to false to actually remove the button, you can see in the document structure that button element no longer exists. This is in contrast to using an attribute like hidden on the button, which will keep the actual button element in the document but obviously won't display it to the user. So here you can see the button still exists in the document, but we just actually can't see it. So the advantage of using something like ngif, as we saw in the previous lesson, is that we can actually, rather than using hard-coded values within the template, control this from the component. So if we had a variable on our class called show button, for example, that doesn't exist at the moment, so let's go and create that in the app component. And if we set it to true from here, Obviously the button appears and we can switch it off and hide it by setting the show button property to false. And of course, in a real project, what you would be doing is changing this programmatically based on the result of some function call or some state that the app is in. And the value that you pass to ngif doesn't have to be directly be a boolean of true or false. It could be some expression that's calculated within the template. So if we had something like number of items on the actual component, going into the app component template, we can then write an expression in here to say number of items needs to be bigger than five for the button to be displayed, which is true in this case, so the button appears. So it's very common to do something like this if you're, for example, only want to show something when there is a number of items in the array and it's not empty. So talking about arrays, that is something that we can work with using the ng4 directive. So let's first of all go back to the app component to create an array of items on our component code. So let's say we had a property called data on our app component, and I'm just going to assign it an array of values, which is essentially an array of objects which are describing some fruits. So we can access this data array directly in our template, as you would expect uh, with a normal array. So to access the first item in the fruits array, we could uh, use template interpolation to grab the data array and the first item in there, as you would with a normal JavaScript array, and then access the name property of that to display it on the page. So you can see here we're getting the name of Apple, which corresponds to the first item in the array. So we could go through and copy this and access each item in the array individually, uh, but that's obviously not very manageable and scalable because we don't know how the array is going to be presented, especially if this data is fetched from an API and we don't know the actual length of it. So what we need to use here is the ng4 directive. And the ng4 directive will take an array and it will loop through it and give us uh, templating facilities to actually output each of the items in turn. So let's have a look at what that might look like for this example. So let's say we're going to have a div element for each of the items in the array. So we're going to use ng4, much in the same way that we did with ngif, and we need to declare the local variable that is going to represent each item in the array. So we'll say let fruit of data. And if we save that, nothing will actually happen because we need to provide a template for each of the fruits in the uh, array, the data that we've got. So when we loop through this ng4, each variable that we've declared here, which we've called fruit, will represent each line in the data array. So we should be able to just say fruit.name. And then when we refresh the page, you can see that all of the names of the items in the array, all of the fruits, are being displayed as a list. So of course we can access all the other properties in the fruit object as well, uh, such as we had 
color and taste. So we can put those out as well. So we'll say color and taste. And this works exactly the same way as a normal JavaScript for loop or for each loop, basically getting each of the items in the array in turn, and then we're providing a template for that to display within the component. So there's one other thing which is useful to do with ng4, and that is to access the index position of each item in the array. And we can do that by saying let i equals index, making sure we've got the uh, semicolon to separate this first statement here. And then what we'll have with each iteration of the loop is that i will be equal to the position uh, of the item in the array. So for example, just before we output all of the fruit details, we can say i and then maybe put a colon there to separate it. So you can see in the output now, we've got all of the different items in the array, but also we've got the actual index position of where they live as well, which can be useful if you want to do so certain things, like actually only displaying certain items based on their index position. So we could just wrap this in one more div here, and then use an ng if statement to write some kind of expression to say, if the index position modulus two is equal to zero, so only giving us the items at the even positions, let's just move this i down here as well, so move that. So now we've created an expression based on the index position of the item, and we're only conditionally showing the ones that are at the even positions. So just a silly example really, but hopefully you can see how you can combine ng4 and ngif to create some powerful uh, conditional templating. So when you're displaying data like this using ng4, you might want to conditionally filter some of the data items that are in that array. And a good way to approach that is to use Angular pipes. And if you're interested in learning more about Angular pipes, then you should check out the next video where we're going to explain exactly what they are and how to use them.